Well, welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Nikki and Bree Show. Last week, Artem and Nikki graced your podcast world. And this week, we thought it was only appropriate that Brian and Bree do it this week. Yeah, I don't know if we're gracing them. I feel like we are. Really? Do you know uh, what grace is? Yeah, like, um, <laughs> like I don't know. From, from the Christian I'm, perspective, the grace is you are freed of your sin or you're absolved from your sin, but not because of anything that you have done. It's because of the sacrifice that Jesus did for you. And so that said, you're essentially saying we are gracing them. They do not deserve us (laughs) to listen to. But here we are. I have sacrificed my time. So you guys are graced with our presence. I have taken all your evil ways, <laughs> sins of the week. You are cleansed You're Wednesday cleansed. on the Nikki and Bree show. That's right. So go forth yeah. and be good. I don't know. Okay. Well, what would I say? Um, yay. How fun. Brian and I are taking over this week. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Yay. We're taking over this yeah, week. Yeah. Um, you've got nothing better to do. Hang I out with us. Yeah. And thank you all. I um, saw your sweet comments. I was so sick last week. And of course, my husband came to the rescue. Um, I got hit with COVID, which is funny because I feel like COVID went away. And then now it's kind of like you're hearing like little things, little breakouts here and there. But it's kind of like the flu. Oh, it never went away. Well, I know, but it just felt like, I don't know. For me, it went away, I guess. (laughs) But it got me pretty bad last week. But um, I am fully recovered. Thank goodness. And um, enjoying my last week up here in Tahoe. And then we go back to school. Oh, boy. School is starting. Well, for a lot of you I've seen on Instagram, school has already started. But um, for the West Coast, I feel like West Coast always starts later than everyone, right? I don't know. It just seems like it's weird compared to where when we were kids. Right. It always seemed like it started after Labor Day. Always after Labor Day, but then I'll met in Arizona. It was weird. We, the older I got, we started to, it'd be the last week of August. Then another year would go by, then we'd start middle of August. And then I remember I had to be a junior or senior in high school. And all of a sudden we're going back to school, like August 6th or 10th. It was something wild, Mm. which doesn't make sense because Arizona is so hot, but I'm kind of like, I feel like July and August are our hottest months in the desert. But get you indoors and learning. Oh. That's, that's a guess. But you might be right. I always thought it didn't make sense, but that actually. I'm never wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what great perspective, Brian. I'm not um, always right, but I'm never wrong. <laughs> but it was really funny because this morning, Brian and I, we actually got in a big discussion about going back to school. There's been like a lot on our mind the past weekend with going back to school, but I kind of was like, oh, we're going back to school. And Brian's like, I feel way different. I'm like, yes, we're going back to school. Yeah, I I like school. I feel like uh, when our kids are in school, one, we get a little bit more free time. But two, they come back from school with new things that they've learned and like all these different yeah. interesting things. And like when you ask Birdie how her day at school was, she has all these interesting stories. And there's also the things that, She's learned at school that we can do with her at home and that sort of thing. And and I like all that. It's fun seeing them grow. It's fun seeing them develop. But it's also fun for us to have like, you know, especially with Bud, sometimes it's only a couple hours where he's at school. But it's like he comes back. And I love here. I love seeing him go into school because he's so excited. And I love picking him up because he's so excited to see us. And it's like, whereas like during the day, is he ever really excited to see me? He's excited to see mama. (laughs) You know, like he's like, yay, mama. But it's never like, yay, dada. And especially with me, it is like that when I travel sometimes, but it's never like that when I'm just like home all the time, like I am now. I agree. And it's so weird because my first instinct when I started to look at the school schedule and this week we're going to have to head back to Napa and get ready. My first instinct was like, oh, chaotic mornings. I become my kid's Uber driver. It's like, it was weird. That was like- She doesn't like that, but I like the schedule of it. I like being on a schedule. I'm somebody who, I like discipline. I like schedule. I like waking up. I like knowing, okay, when I get up, I have to do this, 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 and then we go. 
And then I guess know. for me, if school started at 10 a.m., I, oh I would love that because <laughs> then like as a family, we have a slow morning. We're not feeling rushed. We kind of collect ourselves for the day. And like, she loves slow mornings. I love slow mornings. So I, I like, like mornings where I have purpose. I still have purpose. You I can just, <laughs> I just go with it. <laughs> and then like all of a sudden it's like, okay, like nine o'clock comes around and then we start to get ready to go. That to me seems great. Now I love organization. Like I do. I don't like chaos. I don't. And sometimes I guess the, those early mornings can feel chaotic to me, but just sometimes school there's just, but it's also because you're a sleeper and, Maybe I, that's what and I am is. less of a sleeper. Yeah. So I like to get up early. I like, so like if my morning is not started by six, 6 a.m. and I'm just, you know, but our mornings still start at 6 a.m. Right. Because Buddy's waking us up at 5.30 in the but morning. But there's a difference between when you're like up with your kids and you have nowhere to go than when oh, you're up with your kids I like and everyone has to get dressed. direction. <laughs> like I like Buddy needing direction. Okay, Bud, you can do this for a little bit, but then we have to get dressed for school. Yeah. I mean, I, I do. I see that. And let me tell you, I see it across all social media platforms. Like parents celebrate when kids go back to school. Like, But I think, I don't know. Are they celebrating for the same reason that I am? I just like the structure of it. Well, I think, I think parents go a little crazy in the summertime when you're around your kids all day long. And they're like, half the time they're like, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Or half the time I'm bored. I'm bored. And you're like, just go outside. Leave me alone. So I think it's like you finally get like your free time back as a parent. Yeah. You know, I get that. Right. I mean, yeah. you and I, this past weekend, it's yeah. been I wild wor- in I the Daniels. I haven't worked house. out since Thursday. I don't think I showered since Thursday either. I don't think I've worked out since spring break. I mean, I've sprinkled a couple workouts in, but yeah. I feel like I just have, I don't know. I, it's so funny. Cause it's like one of those things where you're like, Oh, I'm so busy today. And someone's like, what'd you do? And you're like, Thinking of what you did, but you're like, you don't get it, kids. Did they puzzle, take up your I did time. puzzles with Bud yeah. <laughs> for 45 <laughs> minutes and then come home after I went out with Bird only to find that he destroyed one of the puzzles that we put together and we can no longer put it together again. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is that we have a wild boy, but he is um, very high energy. And the thing about Buddy is he's very intelligent, but he has so much energy. He sometimes doesn't know what to do with it. So Brian and I are constantly finding activities, arts and crafts, chores. Like Buddy is someone you have to keep busy, but that's exhausting as a parent. One, to constantly be coming up with something to do, keeping him busy. Because Buddy's the type, like the minute he's done with something, he'll be at your leg. like Or he'll be hitting Bird. Or yeah, then he'll go find Bird and all of a sudden want to have a cage match with her. It's crazy. But, you know, he's just... He's really funny. And I look at him and I'm like, there's so many positive things. And the high energy is actually, it's a positive. It's so good. It's so good. It's just as a parent, it's exhausting. And Brian Especially and I always have, have to. Something, when you have something that you have to do. Yeah. Like for work or something like that. And then his high energy is like needs attention or else it becomes destructive. <laughs> right. Well, and Brian and I are very much the types like. um, you know, before, like when we get the kids down and which let's just be honest, their bedtime routine is like a three hour long thing. But when we finally get our time and we're in bed, um, he and I always like try to talk and think of new ways like to parent buddy. And like, we kind of, I feel like we check in a lot yeah. with each other of like, are we doing this right? Like, is there something we want to change? Like the other night he and I got in bed and we just like looked at each other, like, whoosh, we made it to this moment where we actually get to sleep. And, um, but he and I were like, you know, today felt a little off on parenting. Like I think sometimes as parents, we have to kind of communicate and be like, we have a lot of wins today or a lot of fails. And when you feel like you had a lot of fails, Brian and I are the type. And I I don't know, I kind of recommend this for all parents out there that we check in with each other and be like, why did it feel like parenting wasn't, good today? Like what, why did we feel like we failed? And he and I will kind of brainstorm new ideas, how to talk to buddy, um, different discipline things to like, do we need to put him in like different activities, like just activities to all of this. And, um, I feel really blessed that Brian, as my partner, we can 
do that. Like, it's nice that we communicate and we can talk it out. And he and I are always, we're on the same page a lot. Yeah. And even when we're on different pages, we, it's We fine. talk about it. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. It's like, you're not always, this is one of the things, you know, we didn't talk about our parenting styles before we got married. Right. So it's like, it's like a, because honestly, you don't know what your parenting style no, is. No, actually we did. Cause you remember my uncle who married us, he made us write it down in a book. You remember we did that book with him mm. and we said, how do you believe? Too many concussions. <sighs> I don't remember. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Too many concussions. I don't remember. We <laughs> we did. We had a book, and we those. But that must asked. have been. And so you and I vague. actually answered them all. Like we were on the same page. Yeah, but but the your theoretical parenting ideas are way different than how you actually parent once you have kids. I will definitely agree with that. Yeah. I told myself this, and I'm I'm I'll admit it. I will never yell. I'm like, I will be calm and I will have patience. What about your personality will... made you think that you would be like Because I thought it'd be different with my own kids. <laughs> but a parent fail for me is sometimes I get to a point, I got the patience, I got budget, and then I'll be like, damn it. Or like, come on, guys. <laughs> and then I'm one of those who then sits in regret that why did I raise my voice? Why? And then I, my kids always know I come in and I apologize. I'm always quick to apologize because I feel like when I apologize to them and let them know mommy didn't mean to raise her voice, they understand I'm human and then they're allowed to be human and it's great. But like, <laughs> I wish at times I didn't get to that point. It's who I am. I'm working on it. But um, that's kind of one of my fails as a parent. And like at night I'll sit I'll sit in my bed and like, I'll think about it and sometimes lose sleep over it. And I'm just like, goodness, Brie. And you know, Birdie never gets me there. It's Bud who gets me there, but it makes me feel bad that he's my child who gets me to that point because I don't want to get to that point. And I understand like he can't help himself. So there's just a lot of work that has to be done over in this side of the room. <laughs> yep. Well, come on, Brian. <laughs> you I got that from Bird. Yep. yep. <laughs> Birdie's really big when you ask her. Instead of just saying yes, she'll go, yep. And yep. In my head, I'm like, is that a bitchy tone or is like she good with it? Yeah. But what would you say like this week? Did you feel like you had any like, I don't know. I had big Parent losses. wins or fails? I had big fails. Big win. Uh, yeah, big wins, big fails. Yeah, you know, it's really funny when um, – I feel like when I'm when I get morning time with Bud and it's just the two of us, a lot of times, as long as I'm not completely exhausted, a lot of times it ends up feeling like a win because he gets one on one time with me where he's doing something like putting together puzzles or he's doing we're doing bingo together yeah. or we started I started teaching them how to play Uno and with him and he really loves it. And so like the interaction of it and it get and it almost feels like when we get that one on one time together. Then when Bird comes out and I give her a big hug and hold, you know, and hold her for a little bit, it almost feels like he's kinder. And then I'm, yeah. and then I'm making them breakfast and they're playing well together. And it feels like that was a win, even though I was tired, whatever it was doing that with him and taking the time and the energy to put that effort into him has made him better with Bird when Bird wakes up. Yeah. But then on the flip side, there's been a couple mornings this week where it's just been Bud wakes up, Bird wakes up. They're both saying, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. So I'm trying to make them breakfast as yeah. fast as I can. And then they're at each other's throats and then they're both crying and then all this yeah. stuff. And I'm also trying to keep them quiet so that Bree doesn't wake up. And oh my God. it just, and then like. I usually am up, by the way, because yeah, Buddy yeah. stomps and runs everywhere. But then also like. There's dishes in the dishwasher that have to be put away. And you're trying to do all these things. The dogs have to be fed. Uh-oh, Winston just pooped in the shower or whatever it is. And it just feels like one fail after yeah. another. <laughs> and let's all be clear for a second. Why I'm the one who, Brian, when he when he's home, lets me sleep in is because I'll be the one if the kids need anything in the night. I always tell Brian, let me be the one. It's just easy when we're on this page of like Brian sleeps through the night. Let me be the one to get up. And Buddy's gone through this stage. He's just a very inconsistent sleeper, which is very hard on Brian and I because we were used to Bird, who's very consistent. She sleeps like me. Um, 
and buddy has been coming out in the middle of the night and literally will just like crawl next to me and cuddle me. And I love it because I feel like he's not going to do this forever, but now it's been months of it. (laughs) And it's hard for me to get back to sleep at times. So I get, and it was that because buddy couldn't figure out how to get out of his room. Right. Before, like he couldn't open doorknobs and all that kind of stuff. And so it was like, when he was crying, Bree would go in and do that sort of thing. But now yeah. he just comes out of his room. And even though, like, he tends to go to Bree's side, I still wake up with it. No, you so, <laughs> so it's This like... morning, I see him coming out. I'm like, bud, bud. And he's going to Brian's side. And I'm like, did you hear me? I'm like, yeah. bud, go. And then um, he just wanted to literally roly-poly over Brian to get to me. Yeah, but he also wanted to cuddle me. Well, yeah, but he started with me. He started with you. But he roly polied over me. And over, then started with Over me. my broken arm. Yeah. Oh, and then, <laughs> then he was like, now I'm going to go cuddle Dada. And yeah. he didn't know. And, and then sometimes he goes over and cuddles you while kicking me. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Oh, gosh. The other night he was kicking me. And I was like, why? Yeah. Like praying so hard. Please let this child just sleep. Yeah. But it's weird because then he'll give us these great nights and you're like, yes. And then no. Then like three days later, it's like we're back into. But he was so sweet this morning because he was like, I know it was frustrating for you because he was singing, (laughs) but he was cuddling next to me and he was singing like somewhere over the rainbow, which I kind of taught him. And I said, okay, "Okay, but can you do it a little bit quieter? Because at first he was doing it really loud and he's just going, so over the rainbow. Yeah. And I was just like, it was, so I thought man, that was super cute. He is in those moments. It's really hard to get frustrated or mad because he's so cute. And he's in that three-year-old conversation. So he's asking you these questions and that little voice. And he'll have like his head, like resting on his hand. And he's like, you know, and I'm thinking and, and it's just like, okay, we're not going to be in this forever. So let's just, I enjoy it. You know, but it just makes me a very tired, not as patient parent. <laughs> Much less patient. Hey, I count a lot to 20. <laughs> or I'll walk out of the room. I like, like I liked it if you would have just said you count a lot. <laughs> you <should stop. laughs> That's it. Yeah. Um, no, but even like yesterday. Because when I think of you counting, I think of, of you going, but one, <laughs> two. <laughs> All right. I count in my head. I sit and I stare in silence because I'm counting in my head. I'm just looking counting at them. Counting five yourself. And I'm like, one, two, three, four, five, six. Sometimes it actually makes my blood boil more. I'm like, shouldn't count. <laughs> walk out of the room. Sometimes I do have to walk out of the room. And I just got to be like, they have to, they literally have to do this on their own because they fight. Our kids fight every day. The, <laughs> the sibling fighting can be so crazy and there's just times i'm like just walk out of the room brie let them figure it out because it's hard on me because i always want to interfere as the parent right Mm -hmm. and i always want to be like so what happened what happened and obviously both kids are like pointing the finger at each other although bud's very he's actually very honest yeah he'll come he actually is very honest and he'll be like Birdie pinched me. And I'll say, well, did you pinch her first? Yeah. And he goes, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you know what's so funny is he always cries so hard when she does something back to him. Like, yeah. oh, I can't believe it. I can hit her, but she can't hit me. Yeah, It's wild to me. But bless their hearts. They're growing and learning. And I keep. And we're growing and learning. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought at 40, 42? Oh, oh, I'm not I'm, even 40 yet. I'm 39. At 39 and 42. I've always thought that we grow and learn until yeah. we die. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. No. I actually feel like in business and in just life in general, the older I become, and it's true what they say, like the older you get, the more wiser. But it's true to, you know, life experience really helps with that. And even like this weekend, you know, Brian and I got a call from Buddy's school that they kind of want to change his schedule because they just feel he has so much energy that they just want him to do like an hour a school a day, one hour. And like we're hearing because of his high energy and like just these different things. And I was listening, getting counting, counting because I was getting hot. I was getting mad, cutting promos in my head. Um, 
But all weekend, like Brian and I were like sitting on that, trying to digest that information because I just am like, you know, I, I get quick to protect obviously my son, but I also am like, you know, I, his high energy can't be a negative thing. And I hate the fact that honestly, every day that I drop buddy off at school, I get anxiety when I go pick him up. Like, what are they going to say today? What did buddy do today? And I hate that. I always feel that way. Brian knows, like I always have anxiety and I'm like, you know, I'm really tired of buddy's personality. People always like pinpointing what they feel is negative about him. And they'll even sometimes compare him to Birdie and being like, you know, and Birdie's just, you know, she is calm and she's like, she pays attention. Like they'll just, and I, and it drives me crazy because I think what makes Buddy and what, how Buddy will thrive in life is his natural abilities, like high energy. He's very athletic. He can pay attention and he's very smart with numbers. Like there's all these things. And I'm like, well, let's talk about those to the point. I think I'm going to pull him from school. No kid can go to school for, I believe, and maybe I'm wrong, one hour a day and you're telling me he's going to learn? No. He'll learn being with me in the garden, taking him hiking. I know you, you, we, this has been Brian and our whole weekend of just like back and forth with conversations because I'm a pistol. Well, and, and I also, and I also think like the, uh, the idea, if we could get him in like a, school setting that nurtures his energy right in the sense of like uh that was one of the great things about where we where what we had him doing before but in that school he has to transition out of that into this new thing whereas like i feel like there's a specific kind of energy between three and four as opposed to three and six right and then so it's like so if he could just be more outdoorsy where he doesn't have to like constantly constantly be paying attention or constantly be doing that well, I, I, I just think that like you know when we looked at some of those outdoor schools like right. I, we thought like oh that's right up bud's alley he would do he would thrive in that situation and so 100%. you know which is what the school was for him before it just might not fit him where he's at now right. well i think that's what drove me crazy a little bit is like his class is three to six year olds because they say the older kids help the younger ones but it became that buddy is too disruptive for the older kids. And I'm like, wait, I, I'm confused because I thought the system was different. But that right there, it was so weird because I posted this quote. And if you follow me on Instagram, you saw it in my G stories. But I wrote, um, um, gosh, it was, um, when a flower isn't growing, you don't change the flower, you change the environment. And Brian and I, who are gardeners, we never look at our seeds when we plant, when they're not growing. The first thing we look at is our soil and what we're planting our seeds in. I never like plant something. And if it doesn't grow, think, darn it, those seeds. I'm thinking something's we, wrong with the soil. We got some faulty seeds. Okay. I'm making a point here. I was reiterating your point. Yeah, but I post, <laughs> it was so weird because. <laughs> I was reiterating your point. Oh. I was oh, on the I same page. Being as... honest. I thought you were trying to like really say about faulty seeds. I was like, okay. No, I was saying that there's not. Right. Like yeah, no one. You get some heirloom seeds and they're yeah, exactly. usually pretty good. And it was weird because I posted that quote and then all of a sudden I, you know, then we get the call and I felt like that quote came in before that call for a reason. And I told Brian, I'm like, Brian, buddy is that flower. Like he's not changing and he's blooming beautifully. And tell me any three-year-old who can sit down and play you in Uno. And he beats Brian at times. Like kid is great. There's so I many. I let him beat me in Uno. <laughs> Come on. But there's so many great things. I am not going to let the environment change him. I'm just going to put him in a different environment and let him keep growing. I just feel, and it'll be, will it be tough to have my kids at two different schools? I'm mama Uber. I don't mind. I, um, you know, I, I just feel like whatever is best for them. Like, obviously it's hard as a parent when you have multiple children, but I guess what your children are all different, you know, Birdie thrives at the school. She does amazing. And we've seen so but much But she growth. didn't start till four. Right. So she might've had a hard time at three as well. And that's sometimes what I kind of, in my head, I'm like, did we start buddy too early? And like, I, you know, you, you think to yourself as a parent, like how great, like it will help them, but I don't know, maybe it hasn't because maybe we just needed buddy to 
grow and be that wild toddler and do all those things without being disciplined for it here in our house and nowhere else. I don't know. This is like what keeps me up at night, everyone. Well, and there's different opinions on it. So I, I read a book called uh, Pre-K, The Most Important Years, right? And yeah. it was talking about how important it is to for your three and four-year-olds to be learning and in in like an educational environment, but not not necessarily learning how to write or whatever it is, but still like learning fundamentals about life because their brains are so open and receptive and that yeah. sort of thing. And so, but it's interesting because she was reading about different places where they recommend not even starting kids in school till five. That's and, actually, you know, what's so crazy is that I was telling Brian that it's now this is funny because this is Google and you'll read so many different things, but you know, five used to be the normal age. And actually my grandmother always told me like, she, she feels we start our kids way too early. Like they should be at home with the parents till five. And that's hard because all parents work now. We all, you know, so then there's daycare and nannies and all those things. But um, how that it used to go from arts and crafts and playing to now, like they're really trying to teach kids under five. And that's where anxiety, stress, depression can start to plant its little seeds without us even realizing it in our young ones. And I was telling Brian when I actually did the research and I love America, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, but we're number 17 on the education level and Finland is number one. So I'm like, okay, Finland, what's, what do you do? Three things they say with their, what their schools teach, like the foundation, nature, compassion, and the circle of life. And I was like, that's really interesting. But at the same time, I could see like uh, that type of foundation, like, what it does to a human. But I think Finnish people are also Vikings. So they're like me and they might just be a smarter, smarter group of people. <laughs> Don't listen. to that. <laughs> This is every day of my life with him, but you're, you're right. But so it's just I'm not right. I, as in let, no, let everybody no. know. I am not serious. That is not <laughs> what I think. Well, it you're just a joke. Yeah, we know, <laughs> but do you? Cause you just said you're right. <laughs> I know. And I'm like, no, I don't think I I'm not that. right. That is absolutely wrong. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's very wrong. Uh, but it's funny because, you know, I've been doing so much research this past weekend, just trying to make sense of it all and like also do the best for my child. So, and I know a lot of parents are out there where like every day it's like, you feel like, oh my gosh, like what phone call now? Like what, what now, like, do I need to do with my kid? Like, it always feels like kind of this like ongoing battle as a parent. Like, I don't know. Well, it's, and all the expectation too of, yeah. you know, and then, you know, we're very fortunate in the sense of uh, not having to worry about like, okay, paying for the school or whatever right. it is. But then when you, you know, come across, you know, my parents, if there was something, there was, if, if, if my education wasn't working for me, they couldn't have put me in a different school. Right. They just didn't have the finances for that. We didn't have any money, you know? So right. it's like, um, so I, like my heart goes out to those parents too, because who would love to do something else with their kids, but then they can't afford it, you right. know? And, you know, our education system is, you know, it's so dysfunctional, I would guess, in right. the ability for parents to be able to do that. You I know, agree. When they don't have the finances, so. Which is then important to always check in with your kids, the way, like, I think how Brian and I check in with each other and we're good at checking in with our kids. And even when I got off the phone, I like talked to buddy. Like I, I was trying to like fill him out. Like, how do you like school? Like, I just wanted, I wanted to see if I saw it and he's three, but like signs of like, does it make him feel anything? Like, you know, buddy, how are you feeling about school? I want a fig bar. <laughs> yeah. It's usually how the conversation goes. But I also want him to Popcorn. know, I want it to feel like a habit of like, even if he's three, like, let's talk about it. Granted, it might be a fun little silly three-year-old conversation, but it comes becomes a habit in our household that we have those conversations. And, you know, I see it a lot online. I read a lot of stories where you'll see like kids getting bullied at schools and sometimes things end in a very tragic way. And pe sometimes parents are like, I never saw the signs. So I feel like, you know, I try to really be aware with my kids, like having conversations, especially like Birdie now, like she's in elementary and just 
really like she's going to be with older kids. And I just want to make sure like no insecurity start now. Like let's always talk about something, you know? And I always say, are any kids bullying you? If they are, let me know. No, yeah, that's the wrong way to do it. <laughs> the absolute wrong way. Duh. You're so with my broken arm. <laughs> but you know, it's interesting because, um, just, you know, and this just came to me right now, but it makes me think of Brian, like yesterday, like when you came home, he had a really fun day with uh, Birdie. They had a daddy daughter day because we felt it's important for our kids to separate. And then I, I buddy, I attempted what well, we did. We went for lunch and <laughs> it was fun and wild. And uh, mainly because our table next to us knew Buddy loved to make dinosaur noises. So it turned into a dinosaur noise competition. And he didn't eat. And he didn't eat his food because he just wanted to do that. And I was sitting there in my head thinking, like, can you just, like, let, like stop distracting my child? Let him eat. And I want to eat. Like, I, I just, uh, it was, but it was fun. We had fun. <laughs> but it was so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong. Yeah, but it's but it's good buddy and i we he's he's like my mini at time i look at his personality and i'm like he's your mini he looks exactly like you but don't you feel like he's more my personality yes and bird's more your personality yes but um buddy I, bird's I feel like, so easy and bud's so hard i saw what you did <laughs> yeah i saw That's that it's true <laughs> I know, so I can relate to Buddy. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so when I put Buddy down for a nap yesterday, I did this meditation just because all weekend, um, you know, especially like with Buddy, like all the Buddy stuff, I just was kind of like, oh, I just didn't, I hadn't felt good. Like, you know, when you feel like you need to kick out, like I couldn't tell, am I been grumpy all weekend or like, am I sad? Am I, what am I like feeling? And I did this great meditation just to be like, you have to own those negative feelings and to like write them down. Because sometimes we try to hide them because we don't either A, want to believe we're feeling that way, or you might feel silly feeling that way. So I was like, F it. I'm going to write it down. And I did. I wrote down sadness, um, confusion, like all these things. But then it was, you know, in the meditation, they're like, now you need to try to pivot from those. So then you write off, obviously, like an affirmation. So I might be feeling sadness, confusion, but I feel so blessed that I have a healthy son who makes me laugh. Like, you know, you just in every day to kind of say the negative, but then right after say the positive. And it started, it really did. Didn't you feel like it shit? Cause he could tell I was a little grumpy, but it started to just help me like remember the positives and like all the things I am blessed with in life and not dwell on like those down moments. And um, I started to really feel different. And now every morning in my journal, I read it to remind myself, like, you're going to feel probably this today because nothing is like figured out yet. <laughs> but let's like remember like what is. And um, and Brian, I feel like you you have a lot of stuff too that you're trying to like pivot with your feelings that I feel like you should share. Yeah. So for me, I've tried to get into some better habits as far as like gratitude. You know, like Brie had gotten me this gratitude journal a while ago and I was like, uh, rolling my eyes, you know, <laughs> and then, um, but then I've started using it, you know, it's been now, I don't know, about a month and it is, it is great. You know what I mean? It's about, you know, getting into the habit before you go to bed. And now keep in mind this morning was really tough, not just with the kids, but with some work stuff. Yeah. And what I do feel like made it harder was that last night I fell asleep while putting buddy to bed and then so so i i was laying next to him and cuddling him and i just fell asleep and i woke up and it was like nine o'clock and it's like our bedtime and i like i kept uh. walking by like looking in <laughs> and i'm like i think he's asleep i was like i'm gonna give him till nine o'clock to wake him up had i already brushed my teeth i probably would have just stayed in there yeah. but i hadn't yet and i can't go to sleep with dirty teeth oh, that's the worst it's feeling disgusting and so anyways so i got up I take some uh, some supplements and stuff before I go to sleep. My magnesium, all these different. It's like fifteen pills of different things. And then I brush my teeth, and then all, and I was like, I lay in bed, and I'm so tired. But I didn't. Do, I was like, should I do my gratitude thing for the day? I'm like, oh no, I'm so tired. But then I felt it this morning, as far as like, I haven't had the same energy, and that could just be. 
it could be any number of things, but it also could be that like, I do think that the more you remind yourself of the things that you're grateful for, right. That right. The, the, e- the easier it is to get through the hard things because life is difficult. That's, you know, that's not something that everybody says. It's like, but it's true. Everybody's life, no matter what you do, right. life is difficult. And if you focus on just the difficult things, then you're going to feel a lot worse than if you're regularly forcing yourself to direct your attention on the positive things. So I agree. But, you know, and just you saying that it's crazy. Like, um, I already feel like after this, I want to like start drilling some more of like stuff I feel because it, it is crazy how good you feel. And even just talking about it, like out loud, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. I just like, you like ugh, feel like you get so much off your chest and all of that. But I feel like Brian, uh, before we wrap up opening up, because we need How to- How long is this opening up? <laughs> I thought this was the podcast. <laughs> We're done, well, folks. See yeah. you later. Dun, dun, dun. No. Yeah. So <laughs> we have to, everyone always wants to know what books you're reading. Okay. And people sent in so many amazing questions this morning. So we have to get to some questions. Yep. But before we wrap up opening up, Brian and I do want to send to Maui. I know Nicole and Artem did last week, but just our thoughts and prayers every night before I go to bed. Um, Maui is still number one on my prayer list. And a good Instagram where Brian and I donated because it goes straight to the families is Lahaina Ohana Venmo. And there's been a lot of big sites that have verified it. Um, I always feel like Jason Momoa has been verifying everything. So he verified it. But um, Lahaina Ohana Venmo. And you'll find it in our bio. So we're sending our love to all of you in Maui. And something that I saw in the new, I actually watched the a little bit of the game. But um, it's always fun to catch, I feel like, for myself, because I used to play soccer, the Women's World Cup, and it was awesome to see Spain win. So congratulations. Why was that awesome? Well, I feel, I don't know. I just feel like Spain, like, it's nice when you start to see teams go to the finals that you don't usually see in the finals. So I don't know. For me and the women, I started to read a lot in there. And now, granted, you're reading a lot. But the women on that team have been through a lot, let's just say. It seems like the last decade of dealing with a lot of BS political stuff behind the scenes. And um, they have fought very hard for not only equality, but respect. And so um, a lot of big stories came out on it. And that might be for another podcast episode. But um, so it was really exciting to see them win. So that made me happy. We are going to take a quick break. And when we come back, everyone always loves what's Brian reading. So we'll come back. Brian, you let us know what books you're reading. But first, a quick break. Brian likes books. Brian likes to read. Brian likes books. Yes, indeed. This is Brian's book segment. Read, read, read. Brian's book segment. Yes, indeed. Wow. Honestly, that tune, I need to hear it more. It's so good. Would it make you read more? Actually, probably what? Oh, really? Yeah. Play for you every morning. <laughs> I love it. Okay, Brian. So everyone always gets excited when you're on the podcast to know what you're reading. As mm-hmm. we all know, you're usually reading about three books a week. Yeah. So no, not three books a week. I read approximately a book a week. Oh, that's what it is. But I read three books at a time. At that's least. what it is. Sometimes more. So please enlighten us with okay. what you're reading. Well, because I was prepared for this, she was preparing me for this all weekend for me to do this <laughs> podcast she said people want to know what books you're reading and usually i because i struggle with the names of authors but yeah. because today i was like oh i know i'm going to do this podcast where usually it's just like haphazard like hey brian I know. nicole is pooping <laughs> can you can you come do the podcast of and so he says that. and so that. uh so yeah so i just had him next to me so people could see so uh, I really so usually I read a nonfiction book, uh, a fiction book, and some sort of like poetry, spirituality, something or another. And I've really loved this. And you could get through this uh, so quickly. It's called Earthkeeper by N. Scott Mamaday, and I don't know how to say people's names, um, but he's Native American, and they're just like short, little, almost like little essays. 
Like, okay, oh, this looks like something I would love. Yeah, it, it is something that she would love, and it's just like those. Um, they're. I just. I love it. I love. Sometimes when I just want something concise and something to think about, like poetry or very short things like this are are great for me to read. Yeah. And it's uh, it's a lot um, on like. Native American thought processes towards the land, which I find to be extremely helpful and useful right now, like in the way that in my own thinking and how I'm viewing the world and all that kind of stuff. There's, uh, I think it's Robin Wall Kimmer who wrote Braiding Sweetgrass. But, uh, you know, if you want to read something longer and in depth about kind of those same things where like uh, the way Native Americans looked at the land and and what science is revealing are starting to kind of intermingle a little bit about mm -hmm. like ecology and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's just really good as far as that, keeping my environmental brain, um, environmental brain, just like attuned to some of the things that I see around me. And especially, you know, I've uh, been going on a lot of hikes with the kids and a lot of hikes by myself. And when I'm hiking, I find it especially useful to like have those things in my head. It makes me more present and that sort of thing. So anyways, there's that. There, I love that. Yeah. There's also this, which most of my hardcover books, I take the sleeve off because I, I, do too. I, I find them annoying. I agree. <laughs> but this is The Art of Impossible by Stephen Kotler. Um, it's really just, okay, so you have these, it's about finding, kind of finding meaning and purpose but also okay once you find meaning and purpose how do you actually get to these get to do these things that are meaningful to you or make you feel purpose and that sort of thing and just like a kind of a a step by step way of feeling things like flow of feeling things like passion and how you know and how a lot of those things intersect um i've really enjoyed it if so i take a lot of notes when I read and write and you can see there's like all these like all these like pages flip down where I underline things and um, things that I like and that sort of thing. So that's that. And then as far as fiction goes, uh, Black Sun by Rebecca Roan Horse, I've been loving and this is something yeah, I've, I've just been really... noticing. You've been real into that book. Well, so what I do. What I typically do with my fiction is I read it right before I go to bed. So I do my gratitude journal and then I do the things I want to do for tomorrow, like the goals, yeah. you know, my goals for tomorrow and that sort of thing. And then I just read a little bit of fiction. Brie likes to watch shows. I I find... Even though I've been a little... You've seen. I haven't been on the show kick that much lately. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Literally. Um, like just like that every two or, Thursday. Two or three no days ago. No one messed with my Thursday night. Two or three days ago, she was just watching like that. Sex, Sex in the, the City. city. <laughs> I was just like, that's that's really all I'm watching right now, and I wait my every Thursday. <laughs> but other than that, like, I just haven't been into watching stuff. I just feel like I, don't, I needed a break, and I can't go on Instagram at night because my sister DMs me all this stuff, and I feel like I can't be doing all this before bed. So I really cut a lot of that out. Yeah. That said, back to me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And Brian's books. Uh, this, so it's Rebecca Roanhorse, Black Sun. Um, so it's like a, a series of books. And this one was a, a like one of the finalists for the Nebula Award, which is, you know, um, science fiction fantasy type stuff. It's really, really good. And uh, I think she has Native American heritage, too. And so so anyways, um, yeah, it's it's really, you know, the world building in it is is interesting and fun. And I also find that a lot of fiction tools translate very well to wrestling. Like yeah. when it comes to like, uh, I also th think nonfiction does too, as far as like how you see the world and that sort of thing. But anyways, I find like there's a lot of tools when you're reading fiction, if you're looking at the, at how they build certain stories and that sort of thing. I think that applies a lot to wrestling too. And so it's almost weird because my brain is so focused on wrestling so much. Like, I see things that apply to wrestling everywhere. You right? do. And, and so he writes like, them down. Yeah. I mean, it's really incredible. All of your notebooks. Yeah. I have a lot of notebooks. All of his notebooks and ideas of, I mean, wrestling ideas to just life ideas to just ideas with the kids, ideas with me. 
um, like you're really great about writing everything down. Well, it's just, I have to get it out of my head or else I go insane. So, or I go more insane. Yeah. Well, and something that's been really cute. So Brian, and I'll let you kind of explain this, but he's gotten birdie into chapter books and, um, I, you know, I love it because every night, how much, I mean, you guys, how many chapters do you feel like you read in these chapters? Well, so it, I mean, it's different depending on the book, but you know, sometimes it all depends on like what time we get her to bed Right. is, but, uh, if we get her to bed early, sometimes I'll be in there for 45 minutes reading to her out loud. And yeah. it's been, um, it's been really fun for her and really fun for me. Like, I, I feel like that's one of my favorite times of the day. It's oh, you just love us. It sitting in bed and reading together. And she, you know, one of the, we did, um, you know, most people are familiar with Little House on the Prairie based on the TV shows, at least, you know, older people like us are aware of Little House on the Prairie, uh, you know, and so, you know, her school had this like summer reading list of like children's literature, right? And so the Little House on the Prairie books were on there. And the first one is Little House in the Big Woods. So that was actually the first one that I read to her. And she... Loved, loved it. it. And then, and then she, he was out of town and she looks at me and I'm like, how long is this chapter? And she like <laughs> thought we were going to read two. And I'm like, Bert, I'm sorry with Dada. You guys might read 45 minutes, but you got 15, but, 20 minutes. But, with mama. So, uh, the third book I read to her, cause we've read actually you guys have, th throughout this summer. I think we've read, I think we're on our sixth book yeah. and they're like, a lot of these are longer books, but yeah. the third book was, uh, the one and only Ivan. Oh, and yeah. it was a Newbery Award winner, which is like a Newbery Awards are for children's books. And um, not only did she love it, but I also found out after we read it that there's a movie and she loves the movie and the movie made Brie cry. Yeah. And I was watching it with my kids and I'm like bawling with <laughs> Stella dies and then Ivan just wants Don't to- Don't spoil things. Okay. Sorry. You have to give them a spoil. You have to say spoiler, spoiler if you're going to read the one and only. Anyways, Ivan. I cried a bunch and buddy kept looking at me like, are you okay, mama? And I'm like, I'm not. These poor <laughs> animals want to be free. Like yeah. what the heck? Yeah. But, um, yes. So and actually one of the things that I found really cool and I just started doing this with bird yesterday to see if she even liked it was, uh, we're reading the girl who drank the moon and she loves the story and it's really good. I'm loving it. But then we were on like a 40, 40 minute drive. And I asked her, I said, do you want to listen to the book? And she's like, can you read to me and drive? And I was like, no, audiobooks. there's a, there's a thing. There's things called audiobooks, and somebody, a professional narrator will read this book to you. She goes, Oh, that sounds great. And so we listened to it the whole way there that we listened to it the whole way back and she loved it. So, yeah. and I, I have to say, and as much as I hate to admit this, the narrator is a better reader than I am. Like she does little voices oh, for really? like, yeah, for, and I do like little voices oh, for the gonna different characters. Bertie's going to expect that now out of us. Yeah. Well, I, and, oh. I, and I do it a little bit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's a, there's kind of like a swamp monster in there and that sort of thing. So I do little different voices for different, different things or whatever, but. You're going to have to step up your game. Yeah. And I don't even know. It might not even be like a professional narrator. It might just be the author, but the author has a better, the author knows where the book is going. Right. I don't know where the book is going. So I I'm just reading true. it to her. And so, uh. So anyways, yeah, it was, uh, it's been a lot of fun and I love, I love, 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 love reading books with yeah. her. You're such a good daddy. You really are. Great daddy, husband, teacher, mm. all of it. Mm. Well, Brian, before we end the podcast, we- Is that the podcast? No, we have to answer <laughs> some questions. Okay. Um, you know, this morning on Instagram, I made you take a selfie with me Yeah. and we got in so many incredible questions and- you guys, you sent in so many. I didn't even know what to choose. But there was a couple like Brian and I that stood out to us um, that I was like, okay, let's, these ones would be really great. Um, I definitely have to get an AW one in there. I know for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so let's start there. Okay. okay. So um, this question came in. What has been your favorite match since joining AW? And also who wins at all in? MJF or Cole? Hmm. So I don't have favorite matches. Anybody who knows me knows that I judge things by my experience while I'm out there. Like, do I enjoy myself? Right. 
and I enjoy myself a lot in a lot of my matches with it, with AEW. And so, um, so yeah, I've had fun with a lot of them and even the, like the harder ones. So I wrestled the, for those of you who are not keeping up with AEW, which I, and probably on this podcast or a lot of people. Right. And, and maybe don't know Japanese wrestlers, which is probably also a lot of people who listen to this podcast. Uh, my last match where I broke my arm, um, I was wrestling a Japanese man whose last name is Okada. Uh, I can't even pronounce his first name very well because, you know, that's not good at it. So I don't want to butcher it. But anyways, um, he did an elbow drop to me off the top rope and it ended up breaking my arm. And then I wrestled another 10 minutes with the broken arm, which the doctor said made it worse. Mm-hmm. And like made that the, and made it, but, that but that said, uh, there's a certain, I find a, a certain joy in doing things that are hard, right. Mm-hmm. And finishing them. And, uh, even though it probably caused me a little bit more damage, like I got more value out of it, given that that had happened versus if it had not happened. And even though I, in no way, shape or form would, if I could take it back, I would wish my arm never got broken and that I'd be able to, so be able to wrestle at all in and Wembley, you know, it's going to be one of the biggest wrestling crowds in history this weekend on Sunday. And, um, and, and I don't get to take part of it because my arm is still, is still healing. I know that's hard on you. Yeah. But despite that, and I, I wouldn't ask for my arm to be broken if I could do it over again, but because it did happen and I couldn't control it, like it almost gave more meaning to how I felt, how I felt about the match itself. And also like I did a press conference afterwards with my broken arm, but we didn't know how bad it was at the time. I True Viking. That. Well, but I think there's, uh, and I do this a lot when I'm fasting. One of the things, you know, there's a lot of health benefits to fasting, but when you put yourself in an uncomfortable position or you do something and it's uncomfortable and you keep doing it, the thing is not like, okay, yay, I did it. It's, can I do this, for example, while fasting or wrestling with a broken arm? Or doing a press conference with a broken arm. Can I do this and keep a good attitude while being in pain, while being starving, right? Like, uh, and those are things that I think about myself or when I, th- I think to myself yeah. when these things are happening. So that that's one of the matches that I really like if I'm looking back on something versus experiencing something in the moment. Um, I really, I really enjoyed that uh, match with Okada. And as far as who wins between MJF and Adam Cole, I'm just excited to watch it. Right. I, um, I think the spectacle of All In, as far as being in front of such a large crowd, uh, like nobody in our generation of wrestlers has wrestled in front of that many people before. So I think that's wow. That's super. That's super cool. So I, I'm just excited to watch it and and watch part of history. Yeah. Okay. Next question. How do you cope with depression as a father? So sometimes you just get through it and there's nothing that you can do. Now for fathers or even mothers out there, what kind of advice would you give them? I mean, would you like, you know, is there anything that helps you get through it? Is that, I mean, I think one is honesty with your spouse, like Mm -hmm. letting your spouse know you're going through it. Um, so then they can kind of, I don't know, take on more of the work with the kids. Um, but I don't know, is there any type of advice you can give to someone? Like, is it a book? Is it something active they do? Is it, what is it? Would you say? Well, so th- there are a couple of things that are known to be, uh, better for depression than even antidepressants, which are, for example, Uh, Exercise has been shown to work as well on depression as antidepressants. Uh, Same thing with cold exposure, like cold plunging or whatever, although I know that's not accessible to everybody. Um, But that also doesn't, just like antidepressants, don't stop depression. These things don't stop depression. You still experience depression. And then so if the question is, if you're doing all these things to mitigate your depression, but you still experience depression, 
how, what do you do in those moments when you are experiencing depression? Part of it is just getting used to being uncomfortable with the depression and the thoughts in your head and knowing that there's things that you have to do anyways. Yeah. And that's where like, to me, that's actually how my kind of obsession with doing things that are uncomfortable started is like, I have all these things in my head that are making me feel horrible, but I need to do things that like throughout the day. So how do I get myself comfortable with these uncomfortable thoughts in my head? Right. And, uh, and so that, you know, that's what a lot of that has been for me is how do you, how do you still experience depression and get through life and be a good father and not even have, necessarily your kids know like not having birdie know that oh daddy's having a really hard day like she might know that i'm having a hard day because kids don't understand it but she still knows that i love her and that i'm still doing things with her and all those sorts of things so all of all of that to say uh some of it is just that is just you just got to get through it and you got to try to keep a positive attitude at least outwardly and um one and then the other thing is what brie said if you have a significant other or spouse or whatever it is, is letting them know that like, Hey, I'm having a tough day today. Can you help? Right. Yeah. And I think help is, is just be honest with how you're feeling. We're all, we're all human and we're all going through a lot of shit. Life is not easy. Just be honest how you're feeling. And I appreciate it when Brian's honest with me. And let me tell you in the beginning of our relationship, it was very hard on me and it wore very heavy on me because I was trying to make him happy or do all these things. And the doctor looked at me and was like, you can't, it's, this is different. This isn't like someone's in a bad mood and you're going to change it. This is depression. It's different. So, um, being very honest, you know, is like, I feel like the first step. And Telling sometimes someone, you don't just, try to hold it in and hide it. Sometimes just lay on the floor and that helps. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Why not? Kids love jumping. A, oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when you're with your kids, right. sometimes they do you, love that. Yeah, you just lay on the floor and let them jump on you. And yeah. even if in your head you're just like, I wish this all would just stop. The kids love it. They're just they jumping do. on your chest and whatever. So. Okay, two more questions. What characteristics of yourself do you see in each of your children? Uh, gosh. So with Bird, I especially see like the thoughtfulness and uh you know she loves she loves reading and that sort of thing like uh she's a little sensitive i'm a little sensitive right uh and so so that's that's what i see in her and in bud sometimes i like his love of numbers and like loving to figure things out like he's always you can always see his brain working like mm, trying, and like he always does like what does he do is it with mm-hmm. <laughs> And he's always trying to figure something out. Now his like hand will go on his head. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and then he'll put his finger in the air. Like, okay, now I know. Yeah. And I also, I feel like both of our kids are really starting to love being outside and in nature and that sort of thing. And, you know, the birdie yesterday was just, sorry. She says, uh, she says, I don't want to leave. I don't want to there's. And I said, Oh really? You love it here? Sweet girl. And she goes, yeah, I don't want to leave because there's so much nature around. And I was like, kids oh, love Tahoe. Yeah. So it's so cute. Yep. Okay. Last question. And we're going to end it about me. Cause oh, I like that. Yeah. Um, when planning time with Brie, what do you think about first? Oh gosh. So I try to think of Mostly I just try to think of what she would enjoy because it's not, this is what I find. I find when we get alone time together and go do something, I enjoy just about anything minus something that involves her drinking a lot. (laughs) I usually say the drinking when I'm with Nicole. (laughs) And if you're going to the live podcast this weekend, which if you live in Arizona, you better have bought your tickets. I will drink there. Because you're not around. Oh, boy. (laughs) Oh, boy. I I suspect there will be debauchery there. Brie mode usually comes out at the live podcast. Yeah. That's true. But you're almost 40. That's fine. Which means I I don't really give a shit anymore. So then it comes out even more. You know, back in the day, I kind of cared. Now I don't care. I'm like, whatever. Yeah. uh, That goes to like a a quote that I like that said, uh, it's something 
something along these lines. It's like when you're when you're 20, you care what everyone thinks. When you're 40, you don't care what anybody thinks. I don't. When you're 60, you realize nobody was thinking about you anyways. Oh, that's so good. It's so good. That's and so it's true. true. Yeah. <laughs> but usually, oh, look at the cute little chipmunk. Oh my gosh, look at his little face. Oh, it's so cute. So usually when Brian plans things, SEX is my favorite. Yeah. But, but, <laughs> so when I'm planning things, th that includes that, uh, I try to plan things that I think she's really going to enjoy. Because, for example, she likes fancy restaurants and she likes... Okay, I don't like fancy restaurants. No, no, no. I, I don't want to... Maybe I should say... Fancy is not the right word. I restaurants like <laughs> with with good food and yes. good wine. I'm a foodie, so yeah, good and food so and good wine. Yeah, um, I like trying new things like that. He knows that. Like, yeah, take me to a restaurant with a vibe, and the food's good, a good wine list, and like. And then, so for example, she'll say things like this: "Oh, this sounds like fun," and I'll be like, "Oh, well, we should go do that." Yes, this he's good thing at that. that you sound that you think sounds like fun, we should go do. Yeah. Versus like. Hey, this sounds like fun to me. Come do this thing that I want to do that sounds like fun. That I don't I don't I don't even think like that. Yeah. Right? Um, right. But you're really great at planning things. So, we are going to end our podcast with a little inspiration and affirmation. And I saw this quote one of my friends put it up on Instagram this morning and I was like, "Oh my gosh, I love that." It's by Mark Holterhoff. Holterhoff. Yeah. Mark Holderhoff. And um, this is what he says. Nature and children are natural playmates. They're both wild and messy, unpredictable and beautiful. And when I saw that quote, I really thought of Buddy and, you know, like just everything, but just the situation I'm going through right now and what's been like on my mind. But I really thought of Buddy like he is wild and messy and unpredictable and beautiful. And that is nature. And that's why my son belongs in nature because they are natural playmates. And I'm so grateful he has the dad he has. And I think the mom he has too. Yeah. Because Dave, David Hasselhoff is so wise. That's not David Hasselhoff. I thought that's what you said. Mark Holterhoff. Oh. <laughs> he was great in that show with all the with Pamela Anderson in the bikinis. Okay. I'm not listening to you. Um, <laughs> so wise. But um, so, yeah, I thought that was a really beautiful quote and a great way, I feel like, to end this podcast. And Brian, I have to say, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. It's always a treat. And I feel like for our listeners, it's really fun. Last week they got um, Nikki and Artem, and this week they get us, and we're all very different. It's crazy it's that nice. Nicole's still pooping. Okay. You can't do that. <laughs> Nicole will kill him, by the way. The story she of Nicole's life. <laughs> She doesn't have the guts to kill me. Okay. Any last words for our listeners? No. Okay. I just hope everybody's I, enjoying their life and everybody's staying safe. And that if you have an opportunity to for places like Maui or, or places where you live that need help, if you have the opportunity to give, please do. If you don't have the opportunity to give, uh, just send your prayers and well wishes to, to people that need help. So. Yes. And also... Um, you can see this video on YouTube. That's right. We're putting up our videos on YouTube. So make sure to go follow our YouTube channel and um, check out our shows from the podcast. You can also follow our IG page, The Nikki and Bree Show. And we're on Facebook. And this coming weekend, we are live at Gila River Casino Wild Horse Pass. So go get your tickets. It's going to be an amazing show. Artem and Gleb are on there. Nikki and I have some fun surprises. Everyone always walks away, I feel like, from our live show. Just being like, that was a really great time. So get your tickets. Come see us live this Friday at Gila River Casino, Wild Horse Pass. You're going to regret it if you don't. Okay, I love you, sweet face. Thank you for coming on. I love you, too. <laughs>